Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about a specific thing for um, dealing with the right hand. This. Nail noise. We're going to, I'm going to teach you how to avoid that, okay? So we don't have to worry about our left hand because we're going to do a simple exercise on open strings. So your left hand could just kind of chillax, just kind of, you know, leave it on your, on your lap here. And for those of you that are struggling with um, tension, this is perfect because you have one less thing to worry about. Because I get students that they get really tense and they're playing and then they can't move their hands fast enough and they can't be accurate enough because there's a lot of tension. So when there's a lot of tension, <laughs> you can't move. So this should help those of you with that with that issue, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see, where to begin? Oh, let's talk about neutral position. So neutral position for our hand looks like this. Pull this up so you can see it. This is neutral position right here. Notice my wrist is it's in a neutral position. It's, it's straight, right? That's the way I was taught. That's the way I teach my students. The only problem is when we play our bass strings with our fingers in this position, nine times out of 10, we'll get scratch, a scratchy sound. There it is, okay? If you don't train your, if you haven't trained your ear to listen for it, you might not even notice it, but if I'm bringing it up, hopefully as I bring it up, you can begin to hear it in your in your playing. Okay, so in neutral position, okay, it's you're you're gonna be fine in the treble strings because your your thumb will play the bass strings. You don't worry, you don't have to worry about it so much. But once you move up, you get that. So um, I feel like I'm repeating myself. So let me just show you what you're gonna do to avoid it. It's a really simple technique. All you have to do is when you get to those bass strings, you simply turn your wrist just a little bit, not too much. You want to do this, just a little bit, so that you are changing the angle in which your your fingers or your fingernails are attacking the bass strings. Um, the best way to describe it would be at a more perpendicular angle, right? As opposed to this way, as opposed to like which is the way you play these strings, kind of playing on the side. Um, you're a little bit more straight on the string. Okay, and that nine times out of ten will kind of take away that scratchy noise for good. Uh, if not, then it'll definitely mitigate it. So here it is on the sixth string. It's going to be easiest to hear. Scratchy noise with in neutral position. Twist your hand just a little bit. And now it's gone. I kind of still heard it there but the idea is most of it is gone. Your nails might catch, by the way, and that's where practice comes in. So the more you practice it, the more you can kind of, you know, work on exactly where you need to place your finger so that your nails don't get caught. I know I have a, a big issue with my index finger, it catches a lot. But the more I practice, I find um, in this manner where I'm listening and I'm focusing on that, the more it starts to go away. But if I'm not on top of it, it just comes back. <clears throat> right as rain. So here's again, notice my hand position. Let's go. Just for comparison's sake, back to neutral position. Oh, now you should be able to hear it. Yeah, it sounds ugly. There it is. So what you can do, um, you don't even necessarily have to do an exercise, but I will show you one in a second. But all you have to do is do what I'm doing, just listen. And that actually, you know what? I'm gonna go on a tangent here. When you're practicing anything, you have to listen to what you're playing. You have to listen to the sounds and the notes that you're producing. You can't just kind of go by the motions, okay, I'm gonna practice these four measures and just, all right, let me, let me put on a YouTube video and just kind of, oh, you know, laughing at some sort of comedy script. That doesn't work. You have to focus on what you're doing and listen to what, you're, what, you're, what your hands are doing. And that's going to be the most effective way to practice. So again, you don't need an exercise, which I'll show you one. You just need to do this and train your ear. Oops. Kind of heard it there, but the idea is I'm listening and I'm making corrections when I do hear what I don't want to hear. I'll see my index caught right there. You don't have to play to a metronome. You don't have to play fast. Again, just listen. 
take your time. Your, your tone might suffer a little bit. That was a little thin, a little bright. That's something you can work on too, again, by listening. The tone wasn't so good on that one either, but that's the idea. I'm listening to what I'm playing. Back to the treble strings, back to neutral position. And now, don't have to worry about anything. Okay? That's all you have to do. If you want to do it in an exercise form, let's do, um, let's just start on the first string. We'll go A, M, I on each string. A, M, I, A, M, I, A, M, I, A, M, I, just so that we get all three, all three um, fingers. <clears throat> so neutral position, you can practice this way. You can practice um, doing this in time to a metronome and it'll help you when you're playing a piece obviously you're going to play to a tempo right and so you can do it you know nonchalantly like it's no big thing so just practicing that transition okay so um again this is technically this is not the way i teach this isn't the way i teach my students this isn't the way i was taught but it serves a purpose um when you're dealing with a very specific situation playing a melodic playing melodic material on these strings with your fingers so you you do it just for the purpose and then you're out of there if you're playing like this on a regular and consistent basis that's when it becomes an issue okay this is not normally where your hand is when you're sleeping <laughs> you don't you don't just fall asleep and your hand is like this right you fall asleep and your hands just kind of dangling it's not like this this is forced it's just boom. okay all right so anyways enough of that um, Ring, middle, index, that's what it was. And we're doing the, the treble strings just to kind of establish that neutral position. Don't worry about anything, whether you do a prepared stroke or an unprepared stroke. Uh, prepared meaning your fingers on the string before you play it. Unprepared meaning your fingers off the string and you simply go for it, if you will. And it's there, which creates a more legato sound. I'll go over that in another video, but it doesn't matter if it's prepared or unprepared. Um, actually, to be honest, maybe you should do prepared first just to get a feel for it, and then gradually transition to an unprepared. But for right now, whatever you're comfortable with, do that, okay? So where was I? On the second string, I think. Neutral position here, my hand or my wrist. Fourth string. My tone kind of suffered there, but the scratch is gone. Oops. Fifth string. No scratch. And the sixth. Oops, I kind of moved my hand a little bit too much. And the first string, uh, first finger. Boom, and that's it. And then you can work your way back down so you can transition going from this to start off uh, with, and then eventually, boom. So let me show you that. Oops. I obviously need to practice this myself, it sounds like. There you go. And then third string. I'm using my left hand to mute. That shouldn't, cr uh, that shouldn't create tension, but if it does, you might want to just avoid that entirely. And then returning to neutral position. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. I can't stress this enough. Make sure that you're listening. Make sure that you're listening to um, to what you're playing. It doesn't have to be fast. It doesn't have to be in rhythm. It doesn't have to be in in a specific um, tempo, like equal beats. I guess you could say. Just okay. Just All right, that one was good. That one was good. If there are other mistakes that you come across, um, but your focus is on the scratch, don't worry about them. Yeah, try and correct them as you go, but don't beat yourself up for, uh, over it. You can do another exercise that addresses whatever those other mistakes were, and you could deal with that later. But, but focus on one thing and one thing only. That's the biggest tip I can give you when you're practicing anything, whether it's what I'm showing you in this video or any other video, listen pay attention, make some corrections, continue, do it again, all right? So that's gonna be the end of that video. Hopefully that was helpful, and um, I'll see you next time.